girl, you are fine as age wine. What's up guys, welcome back to another vlog. Today Chelsea and I are actually in Mexico. We're down in Cozumel. I'm sure some of you guys have been before. Oh, no, we're in Cancun. <laughs> so we filmed a little bit coming in and some of our trips so far. Ultimately, we're just really thankful to be here. We're at El Dorado Resort and Spa and it is in Cancun, Mexico. Dude, there's monkeys swimming <laughs> on the trees. <laughs> guys, we've been here all of 15 minutes Five and I'm already minutes. asking this guy if I can like buy a this, this is a quiet and hut. Yeah, and if we could move here. Like, so this is insane. Look at this big, uh, you see that big hut right there? Another yeah, nice if you were getting people. married <laughs> soon, you gotta come here on your honeymoon. Like, El Dorado. El Dorado. There is the bathroom. And look at that bathtub. And that like overlooks the bedroom. So cool. Show you guys the view outside. It's like a jungle out here. We legit saw little monkeys when we got here. And I don't think I've ever seen anything like that before. anymore I mean surprise surprise this is our our couch in our apartment but you know where this is our trip was amazing to Mexico and we had so much fun as you guys can tell with all the clips but we did want to make an effort to talk about something that a lot of you guys have brought up in several videos and that was how was our first time being together intimately we both waited till marriage and we think it's also helpful to those who are choosing to wait for their spouse one day. I don't really know how it's gonna go, but we tried to film this in Mexico. We might insert a short little clip, but like our camera was foggy and it was of like 5,812% humidity outside. Seriously. Got married, it was awesome. And then we actually stayed on site the night before. And then we stayed on site yes. the night after our wedding too. So our first night being together, we were in this like tree house, but it, kind of felt like a loft whenever you went upstairs to mm -hmm. where the bed was and it was so so cool because it started raining like right when we got into the tree house so it was just like you can hear the rain Tin on top roof. of the yeah. the tree house and then i slept amazing and it was just nice <laughs> to just finally rest after such yeah. a crazy day to actually get into what you guys want to hear about because mm -hmm. i thought that's what chelsea was about to do there but she's still setting the stage for like this is what it sounded like and looked well, like this, this is what it is as a woman it's like you want to know that you're comfortable in all ways really in this tree house uh, after oh, so our you're wedding, going to, sure. You're going to, okay. About at three thirty, three thirty. Wow, eleven thirty. I think a lot of our wedding stuff had gotten wrapped up, like the wedding reception and everybody mm -hmm. dancing. A lot of our friends went out and danced after the yeah. wedding, which was really fun. But we went back to the treehouse. We were so tired. But then we ended up. Nick actually got down uh, near the bed, and we both prayed together, like right before we were about to have sex did i just Boom. get demonetized demonetized that's how you got here skippy so <sighs> skippy so in short to explain how comfortable we felt we felt very comfortable with each other and i think the question that arises oftentimes when people decide to wait on this level with each other like in a physical way a lot of people assume like what if we're not compatible in that way like what if he likes different things th than I do that frame of logic it just flawed. it's flawed and it, it's not the reality of how that works within marriage for those who do hold the same beliefs and standards that we do 
uh, there is freedom in that. And there is freedom in knowing that like, I'm the only one who's gonna be with Nick in that way. And you're the only one who's mm -hmm. gonna be with me in that way. That's well, I would that. also say on that topic, in the sense that like, uh, well, we don't like the same things, blah, blah, blah. I would say that it's not about you. Which is such and, a taboo thing to say. Yeah, in the context yeah. of marriage, it's, it's not about, and for me, at least, it's not about what I want. It's about her needs and what she wants. And um, vice versa. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, and when we're, we have that mindset. And, yeah, and the thing is, is when you have that mindset, there's not going to be such a thing. It's like, we don't work together. Like, uh, like it's just, yeah. That's that. Ne I've never heard of that happening. I would say I felt pretty comfortable, too. I was really nervous when a lot of my friends and even our marriage mentors told mm -hmm. us, like, it's gonna be weird, it's gonna be awkward, just like fight through it. And I don't think it was that way at all. I don't think it was weird, I don't think it was awkward. I was pretty comfortable. I think Chelsea was comfortable as well. It was just a really, really cool, special moment um, for us to connect in a way that we've never connected before on a different level than we've ever connected before. Yeah, I mean, overall, like, how much can you say without getting demonetized? If you're married, sex is five stars. I give it all five stars. I agree, we both were very comfortable, but I would say weeks before and days before, I was very nervous because I was just, but what if he isn't gonna find my body attractive? Or what if he's gonna think that this thing that I see is flawed is actually like a bigger deal than I've even made it to be? Or I found that a lot of things that I had like come up with in my head and that I was insecure about, Nick, he didn't even see those things the way that I was because you know oftentimes when we are insecure about something we're seeing through the lens of that insecurity and it's hard to let anyone in because simply we have like our walls up in that way and this could be said on any level with like friendships and all of that but in a level of being intimate together and knowing that there are certain parts of my body that I was just insecure about just to have someone that you know is committed to you and didn't even see those flaws and was like, what are you even talking about? Like, no, I don't care about that sort of thing. And it was just really powerful to me to know that there are guys out there and specifically Nick that I have as an example to just see that they don't, they don't look to those things like a lot of women often do. It wasn't like I was ignoring something that was like blatantly wrong with Chelsea's body. It was like, I didn't even know what she was talking about. Like I, I yeah. I didn't see and I still don't I still don't even know what you were like even insecure about. Um, it's just those Cause things girl, that, yeah. you are fine as aged wine. Oh my lord Jesus. So just on that topic, if I'm you're so weird. a woman who is like insecure about parts of your body, just take comfort in knowing that there are guys out there who like it's just not like they I don't even know how to describe it your perspective and their perspective are gonna be completely different. Yeah. And knowing that you don't have to see through that lens of insecurity anymore when you do like realize that mm -hmm. they're not looking at you like you often look at yourself. And yeah. I found that I become more confident by knowing that like those things I don't have to be worried about or they're not things to be insecure about in general. Yep. So that was like such a big thing for me and I hope that encourages you because the guy that you end up with Or girl. I'm or girl. like girl. Yeah, like, the guys could yeah, I mean there's like there's insecurities that I had about my body. Um, mm -hmm. even walking into marriage. Like I thought I was way too skinny and too small and all that stuff. So I mean like 75% of you guys watching are female, but there's a quarter of you guys that are uh, men. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Like I think I think if two people are in love and um, they love each other for who they are, I don't think in any insecurity that we have, like either one of us have, is it's gonna negate. Yeah, or it's gonna change something. The person that loves you and the person that you love. I think they care about you for who you actually are, and you've heard that a thousand times. That's but it's the truth. It it's the yeah. truth. It really is the truth. I think that's comforting. I think that's freeing. It was freeing for me. It's, I think it was freeing for Chelsea as well, just like she talked about. With this topic in mind, I also wanted to mention I wrote a 60 day devotional that has so many topics involved inside the pages of the book. 60 days of going through really just a lot of real adult struggles that a lot of us face. and. There's even dating that's talked about in there, so I want to show them. I want to show them, guys. Look, 
<laughs> this, my wife worked so hard. Like, I remember uh, one day we were like hanging out because she wrote this. And I remember I went over to her house one day and um, I like started walking up the stairs and uh, I went into her room that she stayed in with all her other roommates. Well, it's a house and her roommates, she had her own room. Anyways, mm -hmm. that's besides the story. <laughs> And uh, I walked up and I was gonna hang out with her. Um, and she was on her laptop with her Word document open, her Bible open, and like when I walked in, she was praying. Like straight up, like calling on the Lord. And I'm, I don't like, even this remember that. Yes, yeah, and so I want you to hold it because it's yours. So. But yeah, I've, I've had trouble in the past self promoting but in reality this book has nothing to do with me mm -hmm. um, the first book that I ever wrote had my story woven into it but this one is and all your about face yeah slapped right on the cover but I love the fact that I was able to write a devotional and spend so much time with Jesus and opening his word and figuring out what resonates with like people and, and their real struggles, but also what is true mm -hmm. and what can people actually apply to their lives. So this is the devotional if you guys want to pick it up. It's called Above All Else. It's 60 day devotions for young women. So if you know of anyone in your life that you would also like to get this for, pick it up. The best place to get it, I always say is Amazon, but there's also all the other retailers out there. Another feature, it's hardcover, <laughs> so that's cool. All right guys, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you leave a thumbs up and subscribe, hit the bell icon down below, otherwise you're not real. Um, let us know what you Amen. think down in the comments, and uh, as always, hope that you have a phenomenal day. Phenomenal. Make sure that you pick this junk up, because I have never been so proud of my life. You ready? Yes. You ready? Here it comes. Remember guys, the only way to change tomorrow is to take a step today. Oh god! Give like a <laughs> uh, what? Remember that time I like clicked in front of it and you were like, oh, do it! G give it to him! Wait, what? I'm so confused. <laughs>